This is another attempt of trying to do glow in the dark palette, tracer palette. This is the one I made before in the previous video. Uh, as you can kind of see, it is clunky and in some type of powder form. Uh, it is powder, so it's not as fine or gel like. This is a Stuart Little yellow lid, glow in the dark powder. Okay, so in this attempt, I'm going to try to get a gel looking ones. So we on Amazon got this. It's really cheap. It's only $15, I believe. Come the whole box. Okay, what is this? Before we get to that point, let's skip all this beauty stuff. I got a three color, green, yellow. Okay, this is a 30 grand. Not the 15 grand one, so it's a little bigger. You can tell from the size. Okay. So for $15, you get three of them. And this one's the blue-green. Okay, glow in the dark. And another one is blue. Um, I did a little research. This three color glows the best. The red, orange, purple, yellow ones doesn't really glow very well at night. So the typical one we're seeing in the toy store is this one, okay? Um, this too, I'm excited to try it out. Apparently, it glows fairly good. So in this box, because it's a beauty supply thing, so I come with a nail file. I'll give that to my wife. She's working on something else. And it's a card. Customer or something. Let me, let, me do, let me do this. Because I think I may be able to use this tray, tray to... Help me. Is that a piece of paper underneath it? Okay, it's a shitty box. This is a... Okay, use this. This is a fingernail extension thing. Don't need that. Okay, and... I believe this is... Slip solution. Keep away from children. Please put in the shade after use. I'm not sure what slip solution is. I should have read the instruction. I don't really care for it. Maybe I'll read it here. Apply layered coat. Apply dependent. Clean the nails. I'm sure you guys can read this in the same time. To talk about slip solution. Holy Joe, Joe. So we are part three. So it's a spider gel one we're using. Okay. Um, don't really know what slip solution is. Okay, maybe we'd need it down the road. And this is... Oh, applicator. We use this to paint inside. Okay, we might use this, might not use this. And this little paste. I don't think we'd use this at all. I'll give that to my wife. Okay. This is kind of cool. I might keep this plastic container. For something else, I don't know what. For pellets, maybe? Put a bunch of pellets in here. Okay. 
So now we have to keep this bag. Maybe we can put a bunch of pellets in here and then put in the box. Okay, so I also got this piece. Uh, it's five dollars. You can tell there's a different tips on it, so you can dip it and go in, in there, fairly easy. Okay. So I think we're gonna start up with. There's a uh, three different kind I want to try. There's the super light, thirteen point eight grain. There's the polymag, and there's the slug. Okay. We'll start with the super light. Um, the reason I got a tool because it's already preset in here, the back of the pellet. So I think it's easier just to apply straight on while the pellet's sitting in here. And then let me grab on the tool. I think I need a the biggest one, the biggest ball tip in the back. Yeah, let's use this. There's another one bigger. Yeah, this one's even bigger. Nice. Okay. We use this one with a giant ball tip in the, in the end. We'll use the the green one. Okay, it's kind of gel-like. Solution. Curious, I believe if I leave this on the side. Do I just dab in? It's almost like a packing it in there. Packing it straight into the middle. Should I use enough to make it glow? But I guess we can we can only try. I'm going to add a bunch of right here. Okay. And do this. It's not as a uh, soft compound as I was hoping. It's it's a lot it's a lot more like um um what do you call that uh Vaseline. It's not it's, it's less like a nail polish. It's more like a Vaseline. So I gotta put that back. I dip another one out. Let's see if I apply another one. Another piece in it. Just push down in it. Okay. Yeah, I think this is what I did. Because it's a bow tip, there is a little space in between. I just push it in. And that's about it. Let me redo the other one. Because I think you need, we need a um, slightly more gel form in order to achieve this packing. Look. Okay. Now we'll fast forward. And then you can see me do all this. Smaller tip. Say this one. Okay, I think I got a trick for this particular pellet because there is a recess in there. I went to grab a smaller bow point, get a little bit, I stick it in, stuff in there, and I just went to the one on the side, will just spin it, my finger, and just let it loose and leave the rest in there. And it packs perfect. Instead, use a big bow point like I was doing before, brutally hammering it. I just grab a smaller one. More like a medium size one. And I stuff in there and I spin. And basically leave all the residue inside. Right in the center. 
hopefully this thing hardens. But no matter what, it's in the middle. Okay. I'll grab a little bit, stick it in here, and pull the pellets out. Stick it in. Grab a little bit, pull the pellets out. Nice. Stick it in. Spin. Leave it in. Now that's it. As simple as that. you guys can see this it's hard to see with the lighting yeah 21 pellets hopefully this will work out I think this a uh, stick in and a dip method is perfect and hopefully this thing hardens I'm not sure it will harden or not if it doesn't harden we're screwed but hopefully it hardens. And it's in the center of the pellet, so the air will push it along. Uh, the weight might be off a little bit because it's uh, in the middle. Just for kicks. Let's try this. So I'm putting in a, a UV ray light. Yeah, it glows. It glows pretty good. Uh, it is middle of the day. So we'll see again later tonight. So the next one, we're going to try with a polymag. Polymag looks very similar to the other one. So I don't foresee any differences in what we just did. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and try it. Try with the polymag. Give a good old chunk, bring it to the middle, and you spin your way out against the side wall of the the inner side wall of the pellet. I think this will add a little weight onto the pellet. So I will suggest lighter the pellet the better to compensate the extra weight this might add to the pellet. The last one is to lock the magazine, so um, I don't think I can take it out. That's why I'm going to try remotely do this. And hopefully it doesn't stick to the sidewall. Okay, perfect. This one's more successful than the sniper light. It gets, gets better as I'm doing it. You might be able to tell how much nicer it is for this this particular one. It feels fairly good. Okay, so let's leave it to the side, let it to dry. Leave this thing to the side for it to dry. As for the slugs, uh, let's see. How should we do the slugs? Let's grab a skinny one. Let's try one. Jeez. The slugs might, might be an issue. So maybe I'll do this. I'll let it spin all the way around. Layer basically a very thin coat on it. It is a little heavier. Um, the other one has a cavity. This, I'm just trying to layer a thin coat on it. 
and draw it back in. Not sure how much more illuminate this would be. That's it is a good experiment. I apply a side and lay a very thin coat on it using this small bow point just like that. Sure the camera is focusing on this or not, but yeah. So this is a um, 24.8 grain slug, which means by the time I'm done with this, this will have a couple more grain sitting on it. So all this palette is meant to shoot at night. I'm just using this container right now for drying it so they don't touch each other and they will set fairly flat because they're still liquid in liquid form once it's dry or on its way to dry it will flatten itself out and I can replace this slug once it's dry replace with um, the one without glow-in-the-dark palette but it would look very cool it would look very cool And nine, it will look like a seesaw. Because when it's in fully automatic mode, fully automatic, you'll be able to see a string of lights shoots out, almost like a Star War. Let's get this thing. I made two videos prior to this, and the reason I did. I uh, used the Stuart Sample ones from Egang Laishi in his China. He was trying this out and I was, I guess I was trying it out at the same time in a powder form. I didn't even bother to look if they do make glow-in-the-dark nail polish. And I was trying to make my own glow-in-the-dark nail polisher. Which makes no sense. If, if they make glow-in-the-dark nail polisher, why try to make your own? But I have to say, from what I'm seeing right now, hopefully this is very bright. But it's the store sample one, that's super, super, super ultra bright. If this is not bright enough, what I might do as an alternative is to dab on... Um, store samples powder behind here so now we got it's, we got this piece basically formed this way and we dab on the powder behind it that could be a next video if this is not bright enough if it is bright enough then we don't need to do that it's actually it works out very well Thing cold. Okay, we'll speed up the video after this. The Hyperloop didn't like the video orientation. Yeah, this is really helpful. Without this, it's almost impossible to do this task. This bow point. Okay, so we got an 
the Slux. And then we got the Polymag. Then we got the Ultra Light. Um, I still got some left. I might keep doing it, this. Let me turn this off. Oh, before I do that, is it almost dry? Wow, it's almost dry. Um, what is that? 15 minutes after? It's good. I got, I just finished it, and it's easily just wipe it off. There's no residue at all. You can even do it without a glove. Um, uh, there's not really a point to wear a glove. So, and the rest of this, use all three colors. So later on we'll see all three colors later tonight. And it dries out fairly good. It's already hardened, if you look. And it will, you know, uh, melt down. So you don't have to do it perfectly. It will melt down on its own to flatten out the shape. So currently, I'm using the uh, UV ray to illuminate the glowing dark ink. We can see this well. I just put it in there. The bulb is still warming up. So you can lower the camera a little bit. You can see it better. There we go. Okay. So once the UV lights are warm, so we should have a full power from the UV light to basically illuminate um, the palette. And we have three different colors. We have the yellow, green, green, and blue. Let's just take out one, take a look. I think it will be easier if I uh, go ahead and raise this back up. It's incredible how bright this is. Uh, this is a blue one, I think. Okay, let's find another one. This is a full blue. Looks fantastic. It'll definitely make a great video if we shoot this full auto. Oh, one jump up. Here's a blue and green one. I think it's a blue, blue, uh, green, yellow, and the full blue. So in between of this. And this was outside, so let's put this in first this time, so we can cook it more. It is fantastic, the way this look. Beautiful. 21 rounds, 63 rounds, full auto. Full auto. Tracer. So see if I can record the tracer rounds. Okay, and shooting at the target right there. Let's stick it back in. Gonna recharge this. Real bright. Real bright. Has to go quick. Very quick. Okay. Real quick. Oh, 
full auto. Record. Both cam are recording. Make sure we're shooting at the correct location out there. Moving this. Correct location out there. Let's get a little more brightness. Okay. Ready? Set. again. Ready, set, go. The lights is dying out. Really dying out here. Not shooting. It's not going as well as I hoped. And uh, lights here is not holding up. It is not holding up. Just double check to see if we can get that. Okay. Really get some light in here. Okay. Ready, set. Okay, that's empty. Around empty. Oh no, still got two more. Two more rounds in here. Ready, set. Might be a fail. I'm not sure what it looks like on camera. Need to review it. <laughs> 